telling you about. Welcome back. Tonight, the government in Iraq says that it wants Blackwater contractors out of the country. They're accused of firing indiscriminately into a crowd of civilians there. We have been reporting about this controversy, the big business that is part of the military-industrial complex, as Eisenhower called it, the good and the bad. Let me try and break this down for you if I can right now. That way we know exactly what we're talking about. A lot of this obviously has to do with money. First of all, let's talk about the contractors. 180,000 of them are in Iraq. Compare that to the U.S. military personnel. 163,000, more of them than them. And now let's talk about some of the big contractors that we're talking about here. Government contractors as of 2006, we checked, and this is the f figures we came out with. KBR, that's Kellogg, Brown, and Root, 6.1 billion. Bechtel, 3.6 billion. That's a lot of money, folks. The Flower Corporation, 2.8. CH2M Hill, 1.4 billion dollars. That is a lot of money. Are they helping us? Are they helping our military? Are a lot of them there just to make an awful lot of money? An awful lot of money. And of course, should war even be about money? J.J. Mesner of the International Peace Operations Association is good enough to join us to talk about this now. And you're here to say that these guys make our military operations more efficient, right? Yes, absolutely. I think it's very clear that uh, these companies add an awful lot of capacity to not only U.S. military operations, and we see those in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also uh, operations by organizations such as the United Nations, African Union, NATO, and so on. And I think that we can see that they add a lot in, uh, in many different sectors, everything from private security through to logistics, training, humanitarian develop, uh, development, pretty much you name it, and they but here's, do it. Here's the problem that I think a lot of Americans have with this, and, and they just worry about the potential conflict of interest. They worry about the fact that most soldiers that we talk to will tell you, I don't want to go to war, I don't want to be in a war, but if I have to defend my country, I will. These guys have to be in a war to be able to make money. So there's almost a war incentive there that troubles people who look at this. How do you answer that? Well, I think it's important to note that these companies don't uh, make the policy decisions to go to war. Uh, those decisions are made by government and well beyond these companies. These companies merely fill a need, a gap that exists in, mon uh, in modern day militaries and peacekeeping operations. But you know so as well as I do that now perhaps more than ever there is a relationship between the people in these businesses, these contractors, and the people who are making the decisions about war in government. There's something called interlocking that goes on. In fact, I can name you case after case of a guy who goes from the State Department or right from the Defense Department into a company and then back into the State Department or into elected office, as is the case with Mr. Chase. So there is a linkage, isn't there? I think that linkage is much more perceived by detractors of the industry and, uh, and of uh, even administration policy necessarily than being true. Let me ask you a question about accountability because a lot of people wonder about this as well and you're the right guy that can maybe set us straight or explain this to us. We know that a soldier who goes over there has to answer to his generals, really answers to us because he's representing us there. But when a contractor goes over there, who does he answer to? Who's he accountable to? Well, it depends. Uh, as, as you said in your lead-in, there are about 180,000 contractors in Iraq. Now, it's important to note that all but about 15,000 of those are actually local Iraqis. Now, those local Iraqis are subject to Iraqi law. However, that foreign contingent is subject to the United States Military Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, so it's, it's known <laughs> basically by its uh, acronym, which is MEJA. And uh, that uh, basically subjects uh, foreign contractors in Iraq to U.S. criminal law, and they are under the jurisdiction of the uh, U.S. Justice Department. Good and fair and honest responses. J.J. Mesner, we thank you for taking time to take us through this. We appreciate it. You're welcome. You know, Democratic